We'll start at the beginning of the story. You moved to London uh, from London to Glasgow um, when you were when you were a child, yeah. and your stammer became worse once you arrived in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Why well, was that? How did it affect your childhood? Well, I wasn't really aware of stammering as a problem. I had been going through what they call a primary stammering stage, which meant that you know just during normal speech development, you are maybe just fluent, and that generally resolves if it's not drawn to your attention that speech might be a problem and something to be avoided. Yeah. So here's me with a quite a strong London accent uh, being brought up in Bracknell. Yeah. So there was me in a Glasgow playground <laughs> and somebody came up and asked, what's your name? But not in that accent. What's your name? And I went, uh-oh, they all sound very different to me. What am I going to do? So that... And that's uh, very uh, And I tried to, to formulate the sounds and I hesitated and, and I was trying to make the sounds that I made acceptable. You say yeah, so the level of fear for, for stammerers is, is never understood. And, th and this is another this burning thing in the back of your head, the fear yeah, of talking. That's about. it. It's, um, it's, we, we've... Uh, Heard about it already this morning from uh, Robin and Isabel. That fight or flight yeah. response yeah. that your body practically goes into shock, and that's a very ancient uh, self-protective mechanism. It's the endocrine system kicks in, yeah. and it, you're basically prepared to either fight or to run or hide and when neither uh, when n none of these is appropriate yeah. uh, you're f frozen yeah and when you know that you have to try and speak yeah. and you nothing happens so when you were with the band terrifying was this uh, was it at its worst then probably not i mean i had kind of uh, become uh, I had become or I'd got to a certain point where I just I had to accept it and right. I thought yeah okay I've got to the age I'm at I don't understand why it's happening I haven't any understanding of it I don't really know how to deal with it and I had a couple of, of terrifying interviews. It was a radio was, documentary, wasn't it? was a radio documentary where uh, the, the radio company had interviewed the individual band members. They'd interviewed the manager, Elliot. Yeah. They'd interviewed some of the road crew and they tried to interview me. This was before you started to work with the Maguire programme yeah. and it's, this is a programme we've spoken quite a lot um, mm. on this program mm. about. Gareth Gates has of been course, here talking yeah. about this, how the big difference it's made to his life. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the early people to start doing this. That's right, that's right. I did my first Maguire course in 2000 down in Bournemouth and went back up to Glasgow and there was nobody else in Scotland at all at that time. Uh, so I organised an open day for information and at that point uh, one particular tabloid thought, ah, yes, we'll interview him. Says, Since dealing with my stutter, I used to be locked up in a box and mm -hmm. kept in a drawer and all the rest of it, as they do. Uh, but it generated a lot of interest, and I got over 100 people. Well, you work with you work with people day. now. You are, you're helping other people. Um, uh, um, it's complicated. Uh, way of working but just just in a nutshell how does it work how did it work for you first of all the the main thing is i have to accept that i'm not a fluent speaker mm. and if i use anything it doesn't matter what it is to try and hide the fact that i stammer or to try and use any tools or techniques to try to not stutter then that's ultimately doomed to failure mm. But it's a very different mentality that you can start and you can begin pr 
practicing to become a good speaker. It's like learning a musical instrument. Uh, and that takes practice and it takes a bit of breathing dedication. Control. And the breathing, yeah, the breathing is very important, but that on its own isn't enough right. to overcome the fear. Uh, it's the, the exposure under controlled situations to gradually more and more challenging situations and you eventually raise your game just like a sports person would do. You raise your game, the exposure happens, the fear level comes down, you raise your game, the fear level comes down and then I nailed it.